Welcome back to Marvelous Videos. I'm Rylan, and this is 13 of the biggest and most exotic xenomorphs. What H.R. Giger did for Ridley Scott and his 1979 film has become an integral part of pop culture, something that would take centuries to fade away from the minds of people. The first film of the franchise had a single xenomorph, and then in the next one, we had an entire hive of xenomorphs as well as a queen. And since then, these beasts have continued to come up in various shapes, sizes, and forms. While the biggest ones are the deadlier and stronger of the bunch, the smaller ones are also known to be quite agile and quick. So in this video, we have compiled a list of 13 of the biggest xenomorphs that have ever appeared in films, comics, games, and other media. Let's begin, shall we? Before we get into today's explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thanks. Now, let's begin. Alien Queen, 20 feet. The queen may not be the biggest of xenomorphs, but she's definitely the most feared xenomorph that has ever appeared in the films. She basically serves as the leader and maternal figure for all xenomorphs of the hive. Although different xenomorph queens may differ in size and look, they are all bigger than drones or workers of the hive and praetorians, or the warriors of the hive. Furthermore, they possess an extra pair of arms and a well-decorated head crest. Although a queen can engage in combat, and may the lord help those who she treats as enemies, she usually remains stationary and lays eggs through a detachable ovipositor. While she's busy laying eggs, the Praetorians do her dirty work of slaying any unfortunate soul that comes in the close vicinity of the hive. However, in case an enemy or a threat to the hive comes too close, she takes matters into her own hands and ditches the ovipositor to launch scathing attacks. For instance, the queen that Ellen Ripley faced in the movie Aliens launched a crazed attack and wreaked all kinds of havoc. But that was also because Ripley had destroyed the queen's entire hive. In most cases, it is the royal ovomorph that later develops into a queen, but sometimes queens come into existence because of molting due to the royal jelly. Like the queen mother telepathically controls all the other xenomorphs, the queen controls and communicates with the drones and praetorians in a particular hive. Interestingly, queens are very intelligent beings, so much so that they can operate human machinery like elevators. There have been various varieties of queens, like the Flying Queen and the Vampiric Queen. For more information on this subject and to learn more about these fierce and elegant creatures, you can check out our other video entitled 13 Dreadful and Ghastly Xenomorph Queen Species Explored, a peek into the macabre world of xenomorphs. We'll leave a link in the description below. The Newborn, 9 feet. The newborn appeared in the 1997 film Alien Resurrection. Beautiful butterfly. Born on the USM Auriga, the beastly creature was a hybrid between a human and a xenomorph. Humans have been known to perform several experiments with xenomorphs in an attempt to convert them into bioweapons and so on. The newborn, too, came to life as a byproduct of these experiments, and the United Systems military personnel was carrying out. The xenomorph queen, which was under experimentation, got contaminated with human DNA, which helped her develop a secondary reproductive system in the form of a womb. The queen gave birth to the newborn, but instead of seeing the queen as its mother, it saw Ripley 8 as its true mother, and it killed the xenomorph queen, its actual mother. Ripley 8, the clone of Ripley, developed some sort of a maternal bond with the newborn, but in an attempt to save the others from its wrath, she had to kill him by having it sucked out into space. The newborn looked far from a regular xenomorph, and was as humanoid as a xenomorph could get. It didn't go through the typical reproductive style of a xenomorph, which includes an ovomorph, a facehugger, and a chestburster. Almost twice the size of a regular xenomorph drone, it was strong and resilient. Furthermore, its head had humanoid eyes, nose, mouth, etc. Unlike the dark biomechanical texture that other xenomorphs possess, the newborn had fleshier and paler skin. 
Also, it showed quite a few traits similar to that of human psyche and emotion, such as sadness, affection, and even anger, as well as a childlike cruel innocence and curiosity. Although it was just 9 feet in size, it would have grown to a much larger size if it didn't die at such an early stage of its life. Praetorian, 10 feet. The Praetorians are essentially the royal guards that serve the Xenomorph Queen and protect her hive from intruders and any other threat. They are formed when the population of a hive crosses more than 300 and the queen feels the need for guards and commanders. Unlike the drones who leave the hive for various purposes, the Praetorians rarely leave the hive. Although they are created from drones, they resemble the queen in appearance, albeit smaller in size. Naturally, the Praetorians possess dorsal spines, metallic teeth, large head crests, and often use these crests to ram into opponents with high speed and momentum. But then, they lack an extra pair of arms like the queens have. These beasts grow up to 10 feet in height and retain a bipedal stance which allows them to run with sufficient speed. But they lack the ability to climb walls and ceilings because their weight pulls them down. There are various kinds of Praetorians, but an interesting one of them would be the Crusher. The Crusher was basically the Xenomorph equivalent for a battle tank and was introduced in the 2013 game Colonial Marines. Also called Charger, it gets its name from its sizable bulletproof head crest that it uses to inflict blunt force trauma on its prey and can even take down armored vehicles like an M577 APC. Like all Praetorians, the Crusher also had a bulletproof exoskeleton that could handle huge amounts of incoming damage. The Predalian, 10 feet. We all know that the Yauchas, or Predators, share an acute and undying enmity with the Xenomorphs. In fact, the Yauchas conduct a blooding ritual for their younger ones, in which the young blood Predators have to kill a Xenomorph and mark their heads with its acidic blood. This essentially gives them the status of an adult, and only after this can they begin to mate and carry on their name. However, we know how xenomorph face huggers simply love to latch onto other people's or other organisms' faces. So, when a face hugger latches onto a predator's face and implants the elite hunter with a chestburster embryo, well, a predalien comes into the world. It's considered an abomination by the Yaucha society, and nothing is considered a greater insult than being impregnated by a face hugger. Both xenomorphs and predators are fierce beasts who live to hunt, if not hunt to live. When the characteristic traits of these two meet, the resultant monstrosity is quite violent, mindless, and evil beyond fathomable limits. The most famous on-screen Predalien was seen in the film Aliens vs. Predator, Requiem, which came out as an honorable predator named Scar. If you wish to learn more about this particular cast, check out our video entitled 10 Unnaturally Horrifying Predalien Hybrid Variants, explained. Once again, you can find a link in the description below. The Queen Mother, 52 feet. The Queen Mother from the comics is the queen of all queens, literally. The Queen Mother is the rarest of all xenomorphs, and she resides only in the home world of xenomorphs, which is called Xenomorph Prime. She is a hulking beast that dwarves even queens and empresses, and that's how she manages to impose her authority over all the other queens. Her royal giantness measures almost 52 feet, but there have been several queen mothers who are bigger than that. While she possesses typical xenomorph features like powerful talons, dorsal spines, metallic teeth, etc., all of these are proportionately larger. However, a unique physical trait in the queen mother is her tendril-like projections that line either side of her jaw. Her tail comes with sharp blades that can easily slice through humans and other inanimate objects, while the claws are strong enough to desecrate armored vehicles. One may think that their huge size must be a hindrance to locomotion and movement, but the beasts are fairly agile and fast. However, because of her position as the leader of the xenomorphs, the queen mother's primary function is to preserve and protect the royal jelly, out of which other queens are created. Also, the royal jelly can convert other xenomorphs into queen mothers, so protecting the royal jelly is of the utmost importance. Or else, a new queen mother would come up and threaten her authority. Queen mothers also possess telepathic powers, and can control other xenomorphs across solar systems and galaxies. Furthermore, they can even enter the dreams of humans. 
often driving them crazy. For example, in the novel The Female War, Billy found herself being haunted by nightmares of the Queen Mother, calling to her. In Aliens Genocide, humans sided with the Black Queen Mother as they had an ulterior motive of acquiring the royal jelly. Xenomorph T-Rex, 40 feet. We all know what the Tyrannosaurus Rex is and how it devastates anything that comes in its way, be it humans, vehicles, or an artificially created dinosaur like the Indominus Rex. According to paleontologists, T-Rexes used to measure around 20 meters in length. Now imagine if one of these creatures was used to create a xenomorph. Not only would you have their size increase exponentially, but they would also become fiercer and further uncontrollable. The backstory of this one is pretty bizarre and unbelievable because, according to it, the creature was created by xenomorph scientists. If at all, there could be such a thing. So, these xenomorph scientists got a hold of some T-Rex DNA after another xenomorph managed to pierce into the T-Rex's skin. Nevertheless, the alien scientists did some research and conducted a few experiments and managed to create a hybrid of T-Rex and their own kind. They planned to use this beast to fight off the predators and other T-Rexes. But as fate would have it, the T-Rex xenomorph went out of control and started to slaughter its own creators. The combination of the two ferocious species had turned the creature into a mindless beast that became insane and quite violent. However, after a brutal and bloody battle, a T-Rex managed to seemingly slay the T-Rex xenomorph proving that nature triumphs over science. But the dastardly beast hadn't died, and it came back to Earth, apparently after gaining sentience. Apparently, there was also a space T-Rex. Let's just ignore the backstory as it gets weirder than weird itself, and take a moment to appreciate the exotic but deadly beast that is the T-Rex Xenomorph. Rogue Xenomorph, 35 feet. The rogue xenomorph was a hybrid created by splicing the DNA of a human and a xenomorph. The scientist named Kleist created the rogue xenomorph so that it could be tamed and used to control other xenomorphs. Most notably, it was one among the few xenomorph kings that have ever existed in literature. The base where the king xenomorph was created held captive a queen xenomorph. Being in the vicinity of another creature, the king xenomorph felt his authority being threatened, so he broke out of his containment and came to be known as a rogue. This brute monster was every bit as strong as the queen xenomorph or her royal guards. He didn't see humans as enemies, but treated others of his kind as hostile and began to slaughter them. But once he reached the xenomorph queen and challenged her for a duel, she proved to have superior intelligence and fighting style. Eventually, the queen slaughtered the rogue king and proved that nature wins over science once again. For a xenomorph, albeit a artificial one, the rogue king was a hulking monstrosity that could have taken down the queen with ease, if only he had more battle experience. Interestingly enough, xenomorphs are known to reproduce asexually, and to give them genders as male and female seems a bit contradictory to their real nature and physiology. However, the rogue xenomorph is probably referred to as a king because it was created using the DNA of a man named John Cray. Survival. Empress, 25 feet. Empress was a unique xenomorph born on planet LV-1201. As she was larger than typical xenomorph queens and controlled more than a few hives, she was captured by Dr. Eisenberg of the Wayland yutani Corporation. By the end, she exacted her revenge by severing his limbs and cocooning him to serve as a host for her offspring. An empress comes to life when a xenomorph queen evolves. Empresses rule over several queens and are among the more formidable monarchs in the xenomorph society. The only xenomorph that the empresses bow down to are the queen mothers, who are the supreme leaders of the xenomorphs. Naturally, an empress stands between a xenomorph queen and a queen mother in size and weight. The empress had made several appearances in video games and role-playing games and has always proven to be a force to be reckoned with. An empress is more or less similar to a xenomorph queen in appearance, albeit more considerably more massive and deadlier. Their all-black color gives them quite an elegant look, but their thick and tough mesoskeletons make them a sink for incoming damage. Like other queens, they possess two sets of arms, but the arms of an empress are more developed and longer than that of a typical xenomorph queen. 
Furthermore, her head crest is also more developed and complex than a regular queen, and she can use it to smash through vehicles and humans alike. Their massive size makes them comparable to a T-Rex. A unique variety of the Empress is the War Empress. These are formed when a xenomorph is still in battle, and the transformation occurs due to genetic and evolutionary responses. So, if we ignore the T-Rex xenomorph and the Rogue King, the Empress is the second largest naturally occurring xenomorph that there is. Ultramorph, 16 plus feet. This huge xenomorph is born when an engineer is face-hugged by a xenomorph. These are larger than xenomorphs that spawn from humans or predators, and can measure up to 16 feet in height. A unique feature about the Ultramorph is that it possesses large eyes of the shape of an almond. It is something that is missing in most xenomorphs. Strangely, this xenomorph has qualities that are straight from the paintings of H.R. Giger, but unlike other xenomorphs, it doesn't have an exoskeleton and has biomechanical physiology. The creature had one of the most humanoid features, like five fingers and an upright stance. Although the Ultramorph was a part of John Spate's script from the film Prometheus, he was ultimately written out of the film, and the Deacon, born out of the trilobite, was featured instead. In the film Alien, Kane, Lambert, and Dallas find a derelict alien spaceship on LV-426. Upon going inside, they find a dead engineer with a huge hole in its chest and its ribs broken outwards, as if something came out, tearing it apart. It is beyond doubt that it was a chestburster and came out of the engineer's chest. However, the chestburster, or its matured form, was never featured in the film. It is highly likely that the Ultramorph may have died out due to starvation. Beluga Xenomorph Also called the Holloway Alien, the Beluga Xenomorph are also present in John Spate's script, but was later cut out of the film Prometheus, during the initial days of production. In the script, the Beluga Xenomorph killed several crew members of a ship after stalking them, and naturally, it would have been a ferocious beast. According to the script, Holloway would have been impregnated by an octo facehugger on LV-426. However, he would have been rescued by Jocelyn Watts and taken to safety where the two of them would have had sex. Sometime during the event, the Beluga Xenomorph would have emerged from Hollow, bursting his chest and killing him in the process. Later, Watts and others would have forced it to retreat into the dark corners of the ship, where it would have grown rapidly before killing several other crew members. The interesting aspect about the Beluga Xenomorph was that it didn't have a rigid black mesoskeleton. Instead, it possessed a boneless body with an ivory white skin tone. And because of the lack of bones, the beluga xenomorph's body was like an amorphous gelatinous blob that could squeeze through gaps much smaller than its own size. Like the deacon, it had humanoid features, like a skull on the lines of humans, etc. Because it could shrink its body, it may also be possible that the beluga xenomorph could elongate it way more than its natural size. Carrier, 15 feet. The carriers seem to be the most advanced stage of a Praetorian, but they look more like a highly enlarged drone. They have a rigid mesoskeleton and are a few feet taller than Praetorians. Their size enables them with greater rigidity and durability and can take more damage than almost all the other xenomorphs, except for the xenomorph queen. However, carriers are not particularly good at combat because, well, as their name would suggest, they were essentially made to serve as carriers and transporters of facehuggers to new places so that the xenomorph infestation could grow to more extensive territories. For this purpose, it has unique launching spines that hold facehuggers. However, carriers provide protection as well as nutrients to the facehuggers while they are carried from one place to another. Despite its frail combat abilities, it becomes a formidable opponent because facehuggers essentially eject out of its spine and latch on to the people in the vicinity who are still engaged in battle. An upgraded form of the carrier is the supercarrier. In this stage, the carrier can hold double the amount of facehuggers than its normal form, and upon death, a supercarrier's body explodes, showering the unfortunate people around it with acidic blood. Crocodile Xenomorph, 13 feet. When a Wayne Enterprises geologist goes missing around the borderline of Guatemala and Mexico, Batman leaves Gotham City and reaches the place to look for the Wayne Enterprises employee. Batman joins hands with a special ops team, and they together learned about the presence of xenomorphs when they suddenly get attacked. Although most of the xenomorphs get killed when the special ops team leader sacrifices himself to save the others, one facehugger managed to latch on to a nearby crocodile, and it wasn't long 
before the crocodile xenomorph, or the crocalien, was born. This giant hybrid slashed one special ops team member who wished to use the xenomorphs to make biological weapons. It never really ends well for people like her. Nevertheless, the structure where Batman and the croc alien confronted each other was constructed above a volcano. Batman managed to make the hybrid bleed just enough to melt the greater part of the structure. Once he was sure enough that the structure and the croc alien would fall into the lava pit, Batman fled the scene, and the croc alien died because of the molten lava. We've seen several xenomorphs until now, but this one strikes more fear in everyone's hearts than the others, because we know exactly just how dangerous crocodiles can be. I mean, yeah, T-Rexes are no pets either, but we never really knew them because they became extinct 65 million years ago. Gorilla Alien, 8 feet the gorilla alien appeared in both video games and comics, apart from being an action figure produced by Kenner Products. As the name would suggest, it came into existence after a facehugger implanted a tetrabranchiate animal native to planet Zevon with a chestburster embryo. It possessed a physiology similar to primates, clearly because of the host species. However, there exist a number of xenomorphs that have spawned out of earthly gorillas. In fact, in one of the stories, Colonial Marines encountered a Praetorian that had spawned from a gorilla. And this type of xenomorph forces us to wonder what would happen if a facehugger impregnated the likes of King Kong, or even worse, Godzilla. Let us know about your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to check out our other videos about the Alien and Predator franchise. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to send a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Have a good one, be safe, and thanks for watching.